Hello and welcome back to another part of design your own level tutorial. In this tutorial, what we will be doing is creating a lower polygon version of our couch here. Now, we didn't sculpt too much detail in the previous video, but it is a little bit of a, a overkill if we're going to create this inside of a game world. I mean, 400, tri 400,000 triangles roughly for to just display a singular couch might stress game engines a little bit too much than what they need to be. So what we are going to do is I'm just going to delete this part over here that we created last time and I'm just going to mainly focus on these two parts because they are the two individual parts that will be most different. The, as the other side was just like a inverted scale or a mirror copy of um, this one over here. So what I'm just going to do is select this one over here. I'm just going to hide this. I'm just going to use this one over here for now. I don't really care about the overlapping details because that might actually look like cushions pushing up against one another. So that should be fine. And I am going to this time add a cube. Let's just look for the cube. There we go. I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to try and match as closely to the outside of the model as what I possibly can. So let's scale on the Z axis and scale it down. And let's move this one over here. And this one I'm going to take like so. Go into wireframe mode, it might be a little bit better. Then I'm going to hit Control R and I'm going to do this and maybe move it all the way to up. It's about there. I'll take this, let's extrude and scale all the way to the top. And that is effectively our lower polygon version done. Just want to add like slightly more detail. Well, for this part, we don't actually need to focus too much on snapping to grid, but you'll see now why. And all that I'm going to do is let's just see that I actually nope. Always when you try and grab sides, always use wireframe mode so that you make sure you select the faces on the back as well or the vertices on the back as well. There we go. And all that I'm really going to do here is I'm just going to go into edit mode and select the edge mode. And I am just going to select like the outer edges like so. So essentially it's going to be everything except that one over there and that face over there. I'm going to hit control B to bevel and I'm just going to like do it like that. So now you'll see that it's got rounded details. So the, the bevel side is just to like add the little bit of extra detail that I require. Then I am going to add a modifier, the shrink wrap modifier. Uh, my target will be the couch base. So we're going to set the target as the couch base. And that should actually be okay. Well, if I click apply, let's quickly hide the couch base. And then you'll see, you might not have noticed anything. It might not look like it did much, but it actually um, snapped to the detail that um, we required. Let me just unhide everything except that one. So it actually snapped to the couch detail. So it's ready actually if we want to make a normal map onto it. So we can just quickly repeat the process with this one. So what I'm going to do, this one is called, let's call this the couch uh, side. And I'm going to make a duplicate copy of that, move it to the side, and then I'm going to hide both of these. 
and you should try and keep some naming conventions. So let's call this couch site low for low poly. And then I'm going to try and repeat the same process. The only thing is here because we have the base arm rest over here, we might just have to create different details. So let's just see here. Let's go into vertex select mode, move that over there. And then we're going to add we can actually do this as two separate pieces. It might be easier. So what we'll do is not duplicate. We will shift A. We're going to add another cube. Scale it down. And this cube we want to match up to our armrest over there. This one's going to be slightly easier. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're just going to select all on this one and hit Control B to bevel. And there we are. And that is our original couch. Let's just hide that one. This is now our couch side. We're going to join these two together so they're part of a singular model and just actually make sure that it's still named couch side low. And actually what, what I'm going to do here quickly, I'm going to move this to a different layer because every time I unhide it, it pops up. So select it, hit M and move it to a second layer. That way I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So now same thing, we're going to add the shrink wrap modifier and the target will be the couch side, we're going to hit apply and there we are. So uh, our low polygon versions of our meshes are basically done now. So let's just select the high ones and hide them. And now what we're going to do is UV unwrap them so that we actually have some proper UV maps to work with. So let's get started with that. And how we're going to do that is just select your model and then tap to go into edit mode. We're going to use the edge select mode and we're going to start at the top here. And then you can hold shift and just click all the way around. Or if you hold control and you click to like a different point, it will try and select everything in um, in between that point and the other one. But it doesn't always work well when you have uh, curved corners. So uh, we're just going to use the shift select mode for now. And there we go. And then with everything selected like that, we're going to hit Control E and mark a seam. Let's hide that one. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Control E and mark a seam. And then from, I think I want to do it from the back here. We're just going to select that one and mark a seam. Then we're going to select everything, hit U and click unwrap. If we go into the UV image editor, you'll see that, okay, that's our couch and that's the sides of our couch over there. So um, everything looks Okay, that doesn't look like there's any real problems except that the scaling looks a little bit weird. Uh, let's just quickly see. Okay, so the problem is, is because we have a non-uniform scale. Now what that means is that because we've edited this model a couple of times, its scale is not uniform. If this is the final one you're going to work with, you want all the scales to be one by one by one. Or, sorry, over there, one, 
So what we're going to do now is hit Control A, and then you can just select Scale. There we go. So now our dimensions are scale and everything should be one by one. So if we hit UV unwrap again, we don't get that error. And if we go into the UV image editor, you'll see that they look slightly better. So uh, we can carry on quickly. Let's just quickly do the other one. So let's hide that one and that one, that one. Now with us actually, what we did on this point over here is that one is a separate model on its own. So essentially we are going to, let's select that one and then you hit control L and we're going to hide it. And we're just first going to mark the seams on this one over here and then we'll get back to the other one. So let's just do that. seam and then the same with this side over here come now play with me there we go and then the same thing over here we're going to select the bottom piece mark a seam going to unwrap that to see what it looks like looks okay and then we're just going to unhide the other piece select this one hit control L and hide it and we're going to do the same unwrapping basically on the side as well probably use that edge so let's do it like this let's see what this one looks like so that's our corner and that's our sides so now we can unhide the other piece we can actually select them both together hit unwrap I don't think it's going to do much of a difference except it packs them a little bit better so now you just want to clean these up. You just want to get the scaling right and um, align them up. So what I normally do is I select like the top one over here and scale the X to zero. So you scale the Y to zero. And then you could do the same with the other ones as well. I selected the wrong one over there. Okay, let's just try this again. Let's try and select all of them, so scale Y0, and then it's going to do that, so don't exactly want that, so these ones, scale Y0, there we are. So I'm just going to show you how to do your basic cleanup on these ones um, you want to get everything because it's a fairly square item that we're working with you want to get everything as um, lined up as possible so scale x0 scale x0 and scale x0 and then this one we could just grab on the Y and push it down a little bit so it matches with the bottom piece. And then you see, that is what it originally looked like and that is what it looks like over there. So if you give yourself a straight edges, it, it's just better to work with when you're busy creating. So I want to do um, it with the others as well, but I don't necessarily want to... Um, miss time with the video so essentially it's all dependent on you I'm just quickly going to do it and then you'll see what my end results look like alright there we go so as you can see that I've tried to keep all the lines as straight as possible there is a reason for this because we have a very square object 
that we try to keep our UV islands as, as straight as possible. So I also just quickly want to show you that I did the same with this one over here. Even though it's got a lot more packing space on the islands, I could have split it. But I found that sometimes when you do split your model into two different sections to be rendered out, um, that might cause other problems down the line. And we wanted to keep everything as close as possible to what our corner looks like so that um, there won't be any texturing issues or anything like that. So what we're quickly going to do is bake some normal maps. So I'm going to right click on this one over here and I'm just quickly going to enable smooth shading. Well, let's do smooth shading with both of them. And then I'm going to hit Alt H to unhide my higher polygon models. And let's just quickly give everyone like their proper name. So this is the uh, couch base low and this is the couch base well just normal couch base we're going to leave it as that okay so what we can quickly do is we are going to select our low polygon go into um, edit mode sorry for some reason screen cross keys is disabled just tab to go into edit mode there we go so Go into UV image editor, you see there they are. We're going to click new down below. We're going to call this uh, couch, well, let's just do CS normal, couch side normal. And we're going to render it at a fairly high resolution, 2048 by 2048. I like to work in high resolutions because you can always scale them down later on. It shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm just going to go back to 3D mode. And what we can quickly do is let's just split this area and make this our UV image editor so that we can see what's happening with both at the same time. Okay, so on this side, what we're going to do is be in object mode, select your high polygon. Uh, just make sure you can see here on the side it's selected. Hold shift and select your low polygon so that they're both selected. Click on your renders tab. And here at the bottom, there's a bake option. We're going to change from full render to normal. We're going to highlight selected to active. I'm going to change the margins to eight and I'm just going to click bake. And there we are, the normal map bakes fairly quickly. Now you will notice these areas over here and this area over there. Now, immediately you might think that's texture um, corruption or artifacts or anything like that, but it is not. What this is, is the, because we split this into two different models and we just joined them together, this is where they meet up when we're baking the normal map. And this part you will never ever see in the game engine itself. So you do not have to worry about it. If it's like everywhere all over your model, then unfortunately you've done something wrong and just see, uh, maybe try and recalculate your normals. Um, just make sure that everything was done correctly. But the way it is here, that is fine. And let's quickly do it with this, the second one. But what we need to do first is always remember that Blender does not save your image files. So even if I click save up here and I'm like, yay, everything is saved. It, it, it does not do that. So what you would need to do is just click on your image, click save image as, and I'm going to call this, you know, couch side normal, click save. And there we go. And then we're going to do the same with this one over here. We're going to create a new image for this one. Call this couch base normal. And we're going to bake a texture exactly the same way. Selecting your high polygon model, then your shift right click your low polygon model. And all these options should still be the same if you click bake. And there's our normal map. So we're going to save this as couch base normal and there we go so there there that is done we have baked our normal maps we can bake ambient inclusion maps or whatever else you believe you require ambient inclusion we might want to bake uh, let's just see uh, so you can see what that looks like so this would be like the part where the couch comes together so this will help in um, with the lighting when you're busy doing lighting on um, during the uh, 
inside of Unreal itself. I think that black piece over there might just be because of the distance. So let's just double check. Because that's not supposed to be that dark. Let's see. Uh, we can increase the bias and try and bake again. Okay. I'm not too sure why that part is completely dark. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not too, too phased about the ambient occlusion. The only real part where the ambient occlusion will make any difference would be over here. And on this particular couch, I don't even think you'll notice the difference. So I'm going to, to skip on baking an ambient occlusion map. So uh, with that said, this is the end of this part of the tutorial. If you uh, liked it, you can leave a like. If you didn't like it, you can leave a dislike. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.